on the 11th of September, 2001, the world changed. We're all familiar with the stories of American Airlines Flight 11, United 175, American Flight 77, and United 93. But on that day, thousands of miles away from the burning towers, a very different scenario was unfolding. One that could have had serious consequences. This is the story of Korean Airlines Flight 085. So, let me set the stage for you. On the morning of the 11th of September, there was chaos in the skies over US and Canada. After it was abundantly clear that the US was under attack, every single plane that was in American airspace was ordered to land. No questions asked. Once US airspace had been shut down, Canada followed suit with its own airspace. Now, at any given time, there are hundreds, maybe even thousands of planes flying in North American airspace. Finding a place for all of these planes to land would be very taxing on the controllers that were on duty that day. Think of it as a continental-sized game of Tetris with very high stakes. One of the planes in the air that day was Korean Airlines Flight 085, with 215 passengers on board. Like all other planes in North American airspace, Flight 085 had been instructed to land as soon as possible. In Maryland, a company called Arnic which allows airlines to text their airplanes, was frantically going through the communications from other airplanes in American airspace to see if they had any problems. It was then that one particular message from Korean 085 caught their attention. In the message was the term HJK, short for hijack. The plane in actuality had not been hijacked. The pilots were just talking to the people on the ground about the events of the day and were discussing possible diversion airports. But the people at Arink did not see it that way. In their minds, if the plane had been hijacked, this is exactly how the pilots would let people on the ground know that they were indeed being hijacked. Immediately, the intel was passed on from Arink to the FAA, who passed it on to NORAD, or the North American Aerospace Defense Command. NORAD immediately sprung into action. The 747 was still over the Pacific Ocean. So they scrambled two F-15 Eagles from Elmendorf Air Force Base in Alaska to shadow the plane and to just keep an eye on it. As the 747 entered Alaskan airspace with the F-15s in tow, the controllers sent a message asking the pilots to squawk 7500. In aviation, a squawk, in very simple terms, is a number that is transmitted by the plane's transponder. It allows ATC and planes to communicate. There are specialized squawk codes for a few contingencies. 7700 is for emergencies, 7600 is for when you lose your radios, and then 7500 is if your plane is being hijacked. The controllers on the ground asked Flight 085 to squawk 7500. Their intention was that the pilots would tell them that they weren't being hijacked if everything was alright. But to everyone's shock, Flight 085 started squawking 7500. Everyone on the ground was now convinced that Flight 085 was being hijacked. That one single transmission sent shockwaves around the area. The governor of Alaska ordered all federal and large buildings to be evacuated. Oil tankers that were taking on oil at the Valdez plant were immediately put out to sea. Lieutenant General Norton Schwartz, who was in charge of the F-15s that were shadowing the 747, now had a tough call to make. He was the one who would have to give the go-ahead if this plane needed to be shot down. He was ready to do it before the plane could target anything in Alaska. NORAD informed ATC that they would shoot the 747 down before it came near any population centers in Alaska. So they ordered the 747 to turn away from the large cities in Alaska. The higher-ups at NORAD contacted the Prime Minister of Canada they wanted the go-ahead to engage the jumbo jet in Canadian airspace should the plane do something unexpected. This is what Jean Sheraton, the Prime Minister of Canada, at the time had to say about making that decision in an interview. He said, Yes, if you think they are terrorists, you call me again, but be ready to shoot them down. So I authorized it in principle. It's kind of scary that there is this plane with hundreds of people, and you have to call a decision like that. But you prepare yourself for that. I thought about it. You know that you will have to make decisions at times that will be upsetting to you for the rest of your life. End quote. But now they had more problems. 
the Americans did not want this plane landing on American soil. On top of that, Flight 085 was starting to run low on fuel. The best place to go would be Alaska, but that was off limits. After talking to the Canadian authorities for a bit, they decided to let Flight 085 land in Canada, Whitehorse the capital of Yukon to be precise. In Whitehorse, the arrival of the plane was met with more chaos. The streets were packed, schools were being evacuated, and phone lines were being jammed, up to the point where authorities had issues disseminating information out to the public. The police and firefighters of Yukon were prepping for the eventuality that their city would be a target as well. In the tower at Whitehorse, everyone was scrambling, grabbing manuals and following procedures. As the 747 was about to land at Whitehorse, the RCMP was in charge of the airport, and they closed off the highway and the airport itself. The RCMP had the plates locked down so tight to the point where they had several snipers on their rooftops. But the plane landed without incident, and once the pilots had been interrogated, they got to know that all of this was a false alarm. There really was no hijacking taking place. This near miss of sorts comes down to the situation that they were in that day. Everyone was on edge and mistakes were made. We still don't know why the pilot squawked 7500. In that situation, the pilot should have been like, oh no, we aren't being hijacked, everything is alright. But them squawking that emergency code had far-reaching consequences. Maybe something was lost in translation. Maybe they thought that ATC was instructing them to squawk that code. Why do you think the pilots did what they did? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. The scary thing is how bad all of this could have been. With everyone on edge that day, it would not have taken much for someone to pull the trigger to error on the side of caution. But thankfully, that did not happen. The story of Korean Airlines Flight 085 has been buried under much more important stories of bravery and courage that day. But Flight 085 was one flight that was a bit too close for comfort. Thank you for watching this episode of Mini Air Crash Investigation. If you like the videos that I make, do consider liking and subscribing. It will really help the channel grow. I will catch you guys next time. Stay safe.